Hello, my name is Mike Schaup and I will be walking you through getting started with desktop virtualization using KVM. You should have a markdown or text file associated with this video that you can follow along to get your KVM installation going. You will be watching me do the steps on a CentOS 7 laptop and the steps should be similar to Fedora or other Red Hat based distributions. Open up a terminal prompt and let's install some packages. So, all of the necessary packages are included in a group called Virtualization Host. It's virtualization with a Z. So, sudo yum group install virtualization host. Enter in your password. Enter in your correct password. And you'll see here it will go through and pull in all of the dependencies needed for this group. So hit Y, let it download and install the necessary packages. Through some magic, I was able to install those packages very quickly. So now there's one more thing you need to install on CentOS computers or installations. Um, this for some reason is not on the default CentOS group, but you will find it on the group in Fedora already. Vert Manager is a nice GUI front end for KVM here. Thanks to some more magic, all of our necessary packages are now installed. One last step before you can really get going need to make sure that the libvertd service is running and enabled. We can see here that by default on my system it's active and running and enabled. This should be the default but just double check and make sure. One more thing, we want our normal user to be able to manage KVM guests. So to do that, we need to, ins we need to instruct PullKit to do so. First, let's create a group. I'm going to call it vert. And any members of this group vert will be able to manage KVM. So now I'm going to add my group, my account, Mike, to the vert group. Replace Mike with whatever your username is. And then there's a file you will need to create. The contents of that file are in the markdown document, but I'm going, it's already been created on my system. I'm just going to pull it up here and, and show it to you. Tab completion won't work for that because I believe non-root users can't read past this local authority folder. Okay, so you see the contents of it. The second line here, Unix group vert, that was that group we just created, and the action is libvert manage. Basically this file is instructing pull kit to allow anybody who is in this group to manage KVM. So now you will, since you added your account to this group, you'll need to log out and log back in before that access can be granted. I will do that now and be back in a quick jiffy. Now that you've logged back in, you're ready to start playing with KVM. I'm going to walk you through starting the installation of CentOS 7 on a virtual machine. Let's begin by launching the Virtual Machine Manager GUI. The easiest way I find to do that is open up the search window and just type virtual. It's going to be this icon here with the red V and the gray M. Let's open that. And you can see by default it automatically connects to the local installation of KVM. If you had KVM installed on a remote system, for example, you could also connect to it through this GUI. Let's click this first icon here. This creates a new virtual machine. This is asking you how you would like to install it. I'm going to use an ISO image I've already downloaded. So I'm going to browse for the ISO 
and I need to say browse local since it's not in our storage pool here. You see, I've already got the ISO under my home directory in a folder called ISOs. So we're going to select that ISO, click open, and it automatically detects that I'm installing CentOS 7. If for some reason it didn't detect it correctly, uncheck this box and you can select the proper operating system. All right, this is asking me um, how much memory my VM should have as well as how many CPUs. Let's decrease this to 512 megs. It's a minimal installation of CentOS. So you don't need that much memory and we'll leave it at one CPU. All right, this is also now asking me how large of a hard disk I want for it. Nine gigs is perfect for what I want to do here. It shows I do have 49 gigabytes available on my system, which is good. Nine gigabytes won't take up very much. So let's go forward. You give me a chance to name it. I can call this test VM for fun. Under advanced options, it's going to be connected to the default NATed virtual network. This is great for testing and will allow you to it'll allow your VM to get out to the internet using your laptops or desktops internet connection. So now I'm going to click finish. It's going to configure the VM here. Connect to the console of it. And we automatically get started with the installation process here. I'm going to show you if you don't have um, mouse integration with your VM, when you click on it, when you click on the graphical console here, it's going to capture your mouse's input. And you can see at the top of the window it says press Control Alt to release the pointer. So if you press the left Control and Alt, it's going to release that pointer for you. So let's click it. I'm going to go up to install CentOS 7 and just let the installation go here. Uh, this window here is basically the one of the easiest ways to manage the VM. You see here up at the top you're given this light bulb here. The light bulb allows you to adjust various um, configuration details for your VM. Increase the number of CPUs, the memory, um, you can even add hardware to it. You can do lots of things here. The, these other icons up here allow you to control the power of the VM, so you can suspend it or pause it and do things, reboot, shut it down, etc. This last icon here allows you to take snapshots of it. So say you get your base installation going and you want to test installation of Apache for so, or you know something else. You can take a snapshot before the Apache installation and say you screw it up so bad it doesn't boot or something to that effect, you can roll back to that previous snapshot. It makes it real easy for testing. And there you have it. It's going to go through, start the installer, and if and when you complete the installer, you should have a working CentOS 7 VM on your computer.